Uh, today's brief khatir, inshallah, wanted to do a tafsir of a small section of the Quran, five ayat of Surah Zukhruf. And it's a section that deals with the reality of this world. Verse 31 onwards. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, this is the famous Surah Zukhruf, it's a passage everybody uh, recites it very often in the Salah. We hear the Imams recite it. Uh, that Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says, وَقَالُوا لَوْ لَا نُزِّلَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنُ عَلَىٰ رَجُلٍ مِنَ الْقَرْيَتَيْنِ عَظِيمٍ The Quraysh said, why wasn't this Quran revealed to one of the two great men of the cities, the two cities? عَلَىٰ رَجُلٍ مِنَ الْقَرْيَتَيْنِ عَظِيمٍ one of the two major cities, Mecca and Ta'if, why wasn't the Qur'an revealed to one of the major people in these two cities? In other words, they're saying, if Allah is going to send a Rasul, why would he choose somebody like our Prophet ﷺ who is not wealthy, who is not from the elite? Why didn't he choose Al-Mughira, the famous chieftain of the tribe of the Banu Makhzum? Why didn't he choose Abu Mas'ud al-Thaqafi? Why didn't he choose Ibn Abd Yalil, the one who mocked the Prophet and taught Ibn Abd Yalil? So a number of seniors of the Quraysh said, if Allah were going to send a messenger from amongst mankind, then he should have sent somebody with wealth and somebody who has a high status. As for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is an orphan and he doesn't have the wealth and he doesn't have the ministerships that the rest of these people do. And by the way, this was one of the many i'tiradat, one of the many objections. And one after the other, the Qur'an responds. The first objection, why would Allah send a human? He should have sent an angel. Why did Allah send a human being? And Allah refuted this in half a dozen verses. We've only sent men before you. Is it something new that a man has come? Is it something you have to deny from the previous prophets? We're all messengers from amongst yourselves. So then they said, if he's going to be a man, he should be a man of wealth, a man of status. So then they said, he should, Allah should have chosen uh, Al-Mughira, or Allah should have chosen Abu Mas'ud, or Allah should have chosen one of these people. So Allah revealed Surah Zukhruf. Why wasn't this Quran sent down upon Rajul Azim, a magnificent man from one of the two Qadiyas? One of the two Qadiyas is Mecca and Ta'if. Then Allah says, Ahum yaqasimuna rahmata rabbik. Are they in charge of dividing Allah's mercy? Are they in charge of deciding who gets to have the biggest share of Allah's rahmah? Are they in charge of dividing the treasures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And Allah says in the Quran, Allahu yastafi min al malaika di rusul. Allah chooses the malaika that are rusul and the humans that are rusul. Allah chooses them. You don't choose them. Allahu a'lamu haythu yaj'alu risalata. Allah knows where his risala is going to come. Allah has chosen the right rasul, not you. Ahum yaqsimuna rahmata rabbik. Are they in charge of qisma of Allah's rahma? Then Allah gives an example and it is this example we're going to spend the next few minutes on. نَحْنُ قَسَمْنَا بَيْنَهُمْ مَعِيشَتَهُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا To show you an example, Allah is saying, your ma'isha, your sustenance, your jobs, who gave them to you? Who made one family wealthy and another family poor? Who made one family merchants and another family farmers? نَحْنُ قَسَمْنَا بَيْنَهُمْ مَعِيشَتَهُمْ فِي الْحَيَةِ الدُّنْيَا We have chosen for them how much rizq each of them has. In other words, you see with your own eyes that some people get wealthy and everybody wants wealth, but only a few get wealthy. Some people have this track, others have that track. You might want a certain track, you don't get it. Others are born into wealth, they didn't even aspire for it, they're given it automatically. So Allah says, you see with your own eyes that this dunya, it's not of your own choice. Some people have it, others don't. So then what do you think of the Akhirah? What do you think of the Rahmah of Allah? When you see that this dunya, you do not have control over it. You cannot decide how much wealth you have. You cannot just will, I want to be wealthy, and you have that wealth. You see for yourselves, Allah is in charge. And some people have this talent, others have that talent. Some are intelligent, others are not that intelligent. Some are born kings and princes, and others are born slaves. 
معيشتهم في الحياة الدنيا. Marvel at this diversity and understand, like you have no power over the diversity of those around you, so then do you think you will have power over Allah's rahma in choosing messengers? نحن قسمنا بينهم معيشة في الحياة الدنيا ورفعنا بعضهم فوق بعض درجات. And we raise some of them over others by many degrees. Some people are raised over others. Everyone is raised over others in some manner. But every single person has those that are higher than him and those that are lower than him in particular fields. In, in, in terms of wealth, whatever wealth you have, somebody will have more, somebody will have less. In terms of handsomeness or beauty, the same things. In terms of intelligence, the same things. In terms of skills, the same things. Everyone has a daraja. And some have higher darajat than others. And so Allah says, وَرَفَعْنَا بَعْضَهُمْ فَوْقَ بَعْضٍ darajat." And we have raised the each of them over others by many degrees. What is the wisdom? Allah is saying, I intended this diversity. Socioeconomic diversity, I intended it. Why? لِيَتَّخِذَ بَعْضُهُمْ بَعْضًا سُخْرِيَّ This is a deep verse of sociology and of economics. And maybe those that are inclined towards these fields should extract more benefits than I can extract because I'm, it's not my field. Allah has given a divine wisdom. By the way, Quran is definitely not communist at all. Completely anti-communist, right? Doesn't mean it's capitalist, but it's definitely not communist. Not everybody should have the same wealth. It would destroy the fabric of society. No society can function if everybody is exactly the same. That's what Karl Marx wanted. That's what those communists wanted. They thought everybody should be exactly the same. And Allah is telling in the Quran, doesn't work that way. We have raised some people over others in certain things, in monetary wealth, in power, in status, in all of the things of this dunya, we have given privilege to others. Why? So that one category can take benefit from another category. Every group is going to find benefit from another group. So those that have wealth need to get benefit from those that are manual laborers. Those that are manual laborers, they need the wealth from the rich. So they do what the rich do not do. Every group of people benefits from the other group and they need each other to benefit. No society can function without that diversity. Every entire civic community needs this diversity of talent, diversity of strength, diversity of skills, diversity of even economic levels. And Allah is saying, this is my wisdom. Sukhriya, by the way, for those who speak Arabic, somebody might say, doesn't Sukhriya mean to make a mockery of? And yes, it is true. The original word, Sakhira, is to make fun of, right? Uh, that Sakhiru Minhu, they made fun of him, right? Uh, and Allah mentions that uh, they, they, Yaskharuna Min, that was Sakhira Allahu Minhum, that they're making fun of the Prophet, and Allah Azza wa Jal will make Sukhriya of them. So, yes, the original meaning of Sakhira is to mock. However, there's a secondary meaning. Because when you mock somebody, then you are making this person lesser than you. So you're kind of sort of subjugating that person. So there's a secondary meaning of sakhira, and that is, وَسَخَّرَ لَكُمْ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا مِنْ Right? Allah has subjugated that which is in the heavens and earth to you. So, sakhira, from the same sakhira, means to subjugate. It means to take advantage of. And there are two even though there's the original meaning of mocking, but the second term is disconnected from the first. So, لِيَتَّخِذَ بَعْضُهُمْ بَعْضٌ سُخْرِيَّ has nothing to do with mocking. If you speak Arabic, you say, سُخْرِيَّ means to mock. Well, yes, one root of it. But the other root means to subjugate, to get benefit from. So, each group will take financial benefit and skills benefit from the other. And this is the beauty of the diversity of Allah's creation. No matter how talented you are and how rich you are and how powerful you are, without the rest of society, you would be nothing. Think about that. Think about that. If you had all the wealth in the world, but no society to spend it on, of what use is your wealth? You couldn't even wash your own car or build your own palace. You could do nothing. You need other people. And those people, they need what you have as well. This is what Allah is saying. We have done this for a wisdom. Then Allah says, وَرَحْمُتَ رَبِّكَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ But I want to tell you one thing Allah is saying. Allah's rahmah, which is Allah's guidance, and Allah's, the knowledge of Allah Azza wa Jal, and the knowledge of the sharia of Allah, and the mercy of being forgiven. Because... What is the beginning of the verse? Ahum yaqsimuna rahmata rabbik. Then Allah mentions, if 
this world is not being divided by you but by Allah, then that which is more important than this world, which is rahmah, is being divided by Allah. وَرَحْمَةُ رَبِّكَ خَيْرٌ مِّمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ And Allah's rahmah is more important than all that they have gathered. Then Allah says, it's a very beautiful verse. وَلَوْلَا أَنْ يَكُونَ النَّاسُ أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا Were it not for the fact that mankind would have adopted one theology, one ideology, which is the ideology of kufr. Now pay attention, this is a bit of a difficult verse even to translate and even in the Arabic. وَلَوْلَا أَنْ يَكُونَ النَّاسُ أُمَّةً وَاحِدَةً لَجَعَلْنَا لِمَنْ يَكْفُرُ بِالرَّحْمَانِ لِبْيُوتِهِمْ سُقُفًا مِنْ فِضَّةٍ وَمَعَارِجَ عَلَيْهَا 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 يَظْهَرُونَ عَلَيْهَا يَظْهَرُونَ right وَلِبْيُوتِهِمْ أَبْوَابًا وَسُرُورًا عَلَيْهَا تَكِيُونَ وَزُخْرُفَ now this verse even to translate is difficult I'll translate by meaning if Allah subhanahu wa taala had wanted to he would have easily given those who rejected him houses of gold, roofs of silver, and ladders to climb upon those roofs of silver, and doors and furniture made out of silver, وَزُخْرُفَ and made out of gold. If Allah had wanted to, Allah would have given لِمَنْ يَكْفُرُ بِالرَّحْمَانِ Those who do kufr. Allah would have given them so much gold and silver, they could make entire palaces. Even the staircase to get to the roof and the beds they sleep on is going to be made from gold and silver. But if Allah had done this, then those of weak heart would have been so enticed by this, they would have left the rahmah of Allah and joined the millah of kufr. Do you understand this point here? In other words, what is Allah saying? This dunya means nothing to me. And if Allah had wanted to, I would have given so much gold and wealth to the kafir in Rahman that he could have built houses and houses and his entire furniture and everything in it with gold and silver. But if I had done this, then all of mankind or most of mankind would willingly give up seeking Allah's rahmah, and instead join the millah of kufr, thinking that the gold is more important than Allah's rahmah. Do you understand this point? It's a bit technical here. So in order to make sure that mankind is not enticed, out of a rahmah to Allah's servants, Allah has not given the kafir this much wealth. In other words, the, the khulasa or the summary, Allah is saying, O people of the Quraysh, and frankly all of us who are so eager for the wealth of this world, do you not realize it means nothing to me? It means so little that I would willingly give the kafir that much gold and silver. But the problem is not in the kafir, the problem is in the weak of iman. If I were to give the kafir so much gold and silver, people would assume that this is better than Allah's rahmah. So they would divert their attention from Allah's rahmah, from the message of the Prophet ﷺ, and they would willingly embrace kufr in order to get the gold and silver. So to not be a fitna to mankind, to not make it difficult for those weak in faith, I have divided this world amongst the kafir and the Muslim. This world, everybody gets. This world is not a sign of Allah's rahmah. That's what Allah is trying to say. Do not judge my rahmah based upon your wealth. My rahmah is distinct from wealth. The kafir can have wealth and the mu'min can have wealth. The kafir can be poor and the mu'min can be poor. So, وَرَحْمَةُ رَبِّكَ خِيرٌ وَجُعْنَ وَلَوْلَا أَنْ يَكُونَ نَاسُ أُمَّةً وَاحِدَةً لَجَعَلْنَا لِمَنْ يَكْفُرُ بِرَحْمَانِ لِبُوتِهِمْ سُقُفًا مِنْ فِضَّةً A whole roof out of fiddha, which is silver. وَمَعَارِجْ And ladders going up to the roofs. وَلِبُيُوتِمْ أَبْوَابًا وَسُورًا And for their houses, there would be doors. By the way, the Arabs did not have doors. The Arabs the, in Mecca and in Medina, they were too poor to have doors. They would have just a curtain. So uh, the, the have, to have a door was a sign of wealth. To have a physical door was a sign of wealth. So Allah is saying, I will give them doors of gold. Doors of gold. وَزُخْرُفَ Zukhruf here, by the way, zakhrafa, again, interesting tangent here, completely tangent, not related. The word zakhrafa, 
is one of the unique words. Again, the origin is disputed, but uh, the th one of the prominent theories is that zakhrafa, which is a four-letter root, which is rare in Arabic. As you know, Arabic original Arabic has three letters. Generally, those that have four or five letters are loan words from other civilizations. You're aware, you're aware of what loan words are, right? Every language gives words and takes words. Every language breeds. You give some words, you take some words. We have many Arabic words in English. We have many Latin and Greek words in Arabic as well. This is the way language works. And when they become Arabic, they become Arabic letters. They have Arabic connotations. One theory, which is, seems to make sense, Zakhrafa is actually from the ancient Greek through the ancient Latin through the Arabic. And the original is Zografi, Zografia. Zografi, Zografi, Zakhraf, Zografi. And the ancient Greeks would call ornate paintings of animals, Zografi, so the drawings of animals, right? So like geography, zoo, zoo like from animals, and graphy is to draw. So zogra, uh, zografia became the ornate decorations that were drawn in Roman houses, in Greek houses. And the Arabs took this word and made zakhraf. Zografi, zakhraf. And zakhraf means to decorate immensely. And it then became used for gold. This is interesting. I love etymology, I love linguistics, so all of this is just a bit of a tangent. So zakhrafa here means gold. Wa Zakhraf. Allah is saying, wa zukhrufa, wa in kullu thalika lama mata'u al hayatu dunya. All of this is just a temporary pleasure of this world. Wal akhiratu inda rabbika lil muttaqeen. It is the akhirah that Allah has prepared for the muttaqeen. The end of our selection here. What is the summary of all of this? Very powerfully, Allah is saying, the rahmah of Allah is mostly manifested, primarily manifested in the risala of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And you, O Quraysh, are not in charge of Allah's rahmah. We decide who shall distribute Allah's rahmah. And I have chosen the Prophet sallallahu alaihi to be rahmatan lil alameen. He is the one I have chosen to be rahmatan lil alameen. You have no choice in this. And if you want me to, to make you clear how you have no choice, even this dunya, which means nothing to me, you don't have a choice in. So that which is precious to me, do you think you will have a choice in? Even this dunya, which means nothing. If I wanted to, Allah is saying, I would give every kafir so much gold and so much silver, they would build palaces and houses. Their whole roof would be gold and silver. Their furniture would be gold and silver. And they would be deluded into thinking this is the real world. So much so that maybe even the Muslim will leave Islam and convert to kufr out of a love of this world. Because of that Muslim, Allah said, I don't want to cause him temptation. Allah does not want to cause too much temptation. Allah is not yani, causing fitna for us. So to make it easier, I made this dunya neutral. My real rahmah is in the akhirah. Wal akhiratu عند ربك المتقين. The one who is going to get that is the muttaqin. A hadith to conclude summarizes all of this point. Beautiful hadith in Sunan al-Tirmidhi. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لو كانت الدنيا تعدل عند الله جناح بعوضة. If this world were worth the wings of a mosquito in the eyes of Allah, meaning if this world were worth anything insignificant, if this world had any value, the wings of a mosquito, how much value do they have? Nothing, absolutely nothing. The Prophet is saying, Allah, if Allah Azza wa Jal valued this world even as much as the wings of a mosquito, which means the world is less significant in the eyes of Allah than the wings of a mosquito. If Allah valued this world infinitesimally small amount, He would not have given a kafir even one sip of water. If Allah valued this world as much as the wings of a mosquito, the kafir would get nothing, not even the sip of water. But because this world means nothing to Allah, the kafir gets plenty, and sometimes the Muslim gets plenty. It's not the mark of Allah's rahmah. In fact, Allah might have given the kafir fortunes of gold, and it would not have demonstrated Allah's rahmah rahma on the kafir. This is not Allah's rahmah. Allah's rahmah is in the akhirah. So these are some powerful verses for us, the symbolism and the analogy and the parables of this world versus the akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our hearts desire the akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not cause us to be blinded by the 
zina of this world and the zukhrufa of this world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us pure hearts whose primary focus is always His pleasure. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our journey through life easy for us and grant us a pious and righteous death. Wa akhru da'awan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala abdi muhammadin wa ali wa sahbi ajma'in. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima إن الذين يؤذون الله ورسوله لعنهم الله في الدنيا والآخرة وأعد لهم عذابا مهينا والذين يؤذون المؤمنين والمؤمنات بغير ما اكتسبوا فقد احتملوا بهتانا وإثما مبينا Oh uh-huh.